I've been a Christian just since last July. Um, been coming here to Temple since about a week after that. Um, and it's been the most incredible eight months. Um, yeah, it's nothing kind of dramatic has happened on the outside, but the journey I've been on as I've got to know Christ and the personal relationship that I have with God um, and the relationships I've built in this church and the blessings I see in my life and just the incredible joy I have. It's just, it's just incredible. So um, to tell you a bit of my story and how I got to this point, um, I wasn't brought up as Christian. I wasn't brought up believing. Like We went to church at Christmas and when I stayed with my nan and granddad. Um, so, you know, I kind of knew the stories. I thought I knew what Christianity was about, but didn't really understand it and didn't try to. It wasn't on my radar through school. It was, just wasn't something I was really thinking about. And um, went away to university, had a friend in Christian Union, um, went along to some of their events, I did an alpha course. Um, you know, I wanted to decide what I thought. I kind of thought this is important to, to figure out what I believe and did it with an open mind. But I just decided I didn't believe the arguments. I heard that, you know, I probably heard that the argument came out and I, I came down on the, I did don't, don't believe it side and, and kept, just kind of carried on with my life. Um, came back to Ponty for a few years, moved up to London, got a job. Um, and, you know, I'd always kind of done well in school and I was doing all right in my job. It probably looked like it was all, you know, fine and sorted up on the surface. But um, I wasn't happy, and in you know, entirely. I wa- it wasn't right. I, um, you know, I could, I could talk to anyone, but I wasn't comfortable pe- with people like I am today. And um, I was quite different. Um, I looked different. Um, I used to be really, really overweight. Um, this is going somewhere. I'm not just telling you that for no reason. Um, <laughs> and, you know, it wasn't just that I, I liked food or didn't know what to eat. I was an addict, basically. And um, I don't want to dwell on this part of the story, but um, I do want to tell it. I do, I do want it to be in there because the contrast between then and now is, you know, who I am now in Christ is so huge. It's an absolute miracle. And, you know, I was using... There's a couple of people in this room I'll, I'll back me up. I, I was using that word miracle before I believed in the miracles, you know, that are in the Bible. Um, so, you know, that was where I was coming from. And then five years ago, I started to go into a group called Overeaters Anonymous. It's a 12-step group, the same as, like, Alcoholics Anonymous or NA, all those groups. So it's, um, it's not a religious program, but it's a spiritual program. You... Um, admit you're powerless over your addiction and you believe that something bigger than you um, can pull you out of it. It Like when you, you know, when you were talking about the baptism, it just, it kind of ties in. We we can't sort ourselves out, but but something else or someone else can. Um, You know, and it completely changed me. Like I have completely changed in the last five years. Um, Just feel like a different person. Um, but kind of because it wasn't a Christian program, you know, intellectually, I was still believing. I was, I was acting like something was saving me. Um, but I was still kind of intellectually saying, no, I don't believe in God. Um, you know, and again, like, Christ just wasn't on my radar. It just wasn't, it just wasn't part of the picture. Um, and then all that changed quite unexpectedly. One Thursday afternoon last July, I was um, at home about kind of four o'clock in the afternoon, got a flyer through my door that there was a what I thought was going to be a concert here that night with an um, American choir, a gospel choir from Atlanta, Georgia. And I was like, how often does the choir from Atlanta, Georgia come to Ponty? Like gospel music, I'll just go hear the music. Um, not looking for God, particularly. You know, just thought I'd come and hear some nice music. Um, and they were up here. It was a big choir. They filled the stage. Um, and they just moved me. There was just something on their faces. It was just powerful. It was just so clearly, patently true for them. Um, And something just moved in me. And there was one lady in the choir. She was probably stood about here, actually. Um, We're in touch now, you know, on Facebook. Um, She knows I'm getting baptised today, and I'm sure she's really happy. Um, We just kept catching each other's eye. Um, So I went to talk. um, They came and talked to everyone at the end. And, um, you know, we made sure we we caught each other and talked. Um, and she was really direct and asked me what I believed and had I thought about accepting Jesus. And I kind of went, um, but, um, you know, but I was at but I was open to it and I had the conversation with her. Um, it was only probably a 10 minute conversation. And, um, you know, she raised all the sort of, she 
I probably raised all my objections that I'd had before, and she had answers for them, and no doubt they were the same answers I'd heard when I was at uni, but I just started kind of opening up to the fact that maybe she, you know, they could be true, um, and she prayed with me that, um, that, that I would come to know Christ, whether that, I think she said, you know, whether that's people or a local church, or, and I thought, oh, I'll have an open mind, maybe six months down the line, something will change, you know, don't really need to think about it. Um, one six months, it was about 10 days. Um, <laughs> so the next, this was a Thursday. The next day, I went off to um, a convention for the weekend with um, and a part of the group that I went with was a couple of Christian friends who are here today. And um, so I had more conversations that over that weekend. And we were staying in a hotel, so I started reading the Bible that was in the bedside table thing. And um, came home, realized, thought, oh, you know, it's not bad. Thought I'd read a bit more of that, realized didn't actually have a Bible, so I went to Harvest by one. Maggie was there, who apparently doesn't often actually go in the shop these days, and we had a conversation. Um, you know, so it's just these little encounters, really, that probably wouldn't, didn't seem like much at the time. You know, we maybe chatted for 20 minutes or something. I don't, I don't know. But something was just changing in my heart. Um, I bought this um, CD from the choir, and there was a song on there, like... Um, is thou, O Lord, are a shield for me, my glory and the lifter of my head. And I had this pretty much on repeat for the week. And, and I don't know why, because, you know, the music was all right, but there was just something in it. And I just had this sense that this power that had been protecting me and healing me in, in OA was God, with a, like, with a capital G. And um, it, I, But I still didn't really get what all this dying on the cross business was about. And... Um, didn't understand what sin was, and I didn't think I was doing it, you know, because I wasn't murdering anyone or doing the really bad things. Um, I didn't really understand it. Um, then I kind of had the final conversation, I suppose, of the week um, on the Sunday night at a thing at St. Catherine's, and um, came home just understanding that God wants to have a relationship with us, each of us. Um, and sin, you know, as I understood it, is... Um, was basically doing our own thing instead of asking what his will for us was. Um, and this was like the final bit of the puzzle for me, really. Like, so much had changed since away. My life was kind of basically working, but there was still part of me that held on to thinking I had to figure it out, that I had to somehow get something right. Um, and this, this just made sense to me. It just spoke to me, and I came home, and... Um, not quite sure then what the process was, but so, you know, I ended up googling and finding you know the prayer of salvation and, and got down on my knees and prayed it that night. Um, and I, I still wasn't completely you know 100% convinced that this was right and this was true, but I thought, well, you know, if it's not, nothing else would be fine. Um, if it is, it could be really good. Um, but you know, I was sure enough to take a leap of to take that leap of faith. Um, so I just got down on my knees and. As soon as I started praying, um, I just knew, I knew I was talking to someone. You know, when I said this prayer, I th again, I thought, oh, it might be a kind of a slow burn. And it was just instant. I just, I don't know how to explain it. It's, it's like a switch that I just know I'm talking to someone, that someone is there, and there is someone who loves me, and that I don't have to do anything to earn it, and, and I can't do anything to earn it, and I can't do anything to stop it. Um, I can't turn it off by doing anything good or bad. Um, and I came to church here a week later um, and just clicked, really. Um, things I'd never understood just started making sense. It wasn't intellectual, you know, it was just in my heart. And now I guess I understand, you know, that was the power of the Holy Spirit. But it was mind-blowing. I was walking around going, oh, oh okay, so if, if he created, yeah, if, if this is true, oh, he made that. He made it. it was like this whole world opening up. Um, and the first, I asked Jess to sing King of Kings because we sung that the first week I came and that line, God of heaven living in me, it got me. You know, this was like seven days into having prayed for the first time. I understood it and it just got me, like God of heaven living in me. You know, it was, it was so big. It was the God who made everything. But it was also so personal. And, you know, just day to day, and, it, and that's what it is to me. It's just, it's, it's huge, but, you know, it's day to day as well. Um, and, you know, it was, it was a massive change in outlook, really, but I never felt overwhelmed. Like, whenever anything was new, within a few days, I just kind of 
either have a conversation with someone or read the right thing and just kind of come to an understanding of it. It was like having my own personal teacher. You know, no one was telling me what to believe. No one said, you must do this, you must do that, you must tick these boxes. It was, I, I've just been guided, really. And, um, you know, he's always there. He's always there. Like, I've got family who've always been there for me, and, and I'm so thankful for that. But to have someone you can turn to in prayer is on another level. Um, you know, I said before, like, I've got joy in my life every day and I feel blessed. You know, and I do that is absolutely true. But it's, it's not because life is a walk in the park and I've suddenly had no problems since I became a Christian. I was told very early on that that, turned, you know, that, that wasn't going to happen. I wasn't expecting it to. Um, I've had ups and downs the same as anyone else does, you know, day to day, boring day to day work challenges and, and big things and little things. And um, I've had some real ups and downs with my health in the last eight months. I think lots of you know, those of you who know me and lots of you who come to church because lots of you have prayed with me about it, um, know that I've got arthritis and um, I'm better than I was five years ago when I first got ill. I'm not in pain, but I get fatigue that like makes it hard for me to do lots of things. And I do feel pretty ill sometimes. Um, and I've known, you know, I've known the power of prayer with that in lots of ways. Like I've had situations where I've been given the strength to do something that I didn't don't think I would have done in my own you know in my own strength and I've had months or weeks at a time where I felt like this is healing and I've been better than I've possibly been since before I had arthritis um but I've I've also had times you know it's not like it wasn't like oh yeah I was cured straight away there's times I've just been ill and I don't know why um and sometimes I have real peace in it and you know when you talk to him about rest it's like Sometimes I, you know, I can have that. I can know that rest and that peace beyond understanding, in the midst of whatever's going on. And you know, and sometimes I'm swinging wildly between the two and <laughs> um, and not finding it easy. Um, but when it's not easy, I choose to trust. Um, and like I learned really on that it's and it's in one of the songs we're going to sing afterwards. I think it's. You know, that, that we choose to praise him. It is a choice to praise no matter what. And, you know, and to come to church and sing whatever's going on. And um, and we do it together. Like, there's something so special in the family of Christ. And, you know, and in this church. Um, I've, I've just found something really special here that I think, you know, anyone who knows me has seen. And um, it's not just that I've got involved in loads of activities and, you know, have a bigger social life. It is that, but it's so much bigger than that because of what we share in faith. And, um, and I, you know, I've seen it all here. I've seen life in the last eight months. I've seen people get married and have babies and be bereaved and have serious illnesses and just using what happens to them to, to glory what God's doing in their life. Um, so last autumn, I saw some people get baptised here. Um, I have seen. I have a preview of the pool before getting in there myself, um, and I saw. And I, you know, I saw that service, and, and I guess was moved by it. And um, it was just a really easy decision for me to get baptised. It wasn't something I, you know, massively had to stop and think about. I walked just. I think it was New Year's Day service. I just walked away and I was like, I mean, "Can I get baptised?" Um, and those of you who know me. We, you know, we'll know that that is not like me to just be decisive. I have to weigh it all up and think about it and analyse it a little bit and discuss it. And there's just, you know, and, and when you talked about being a control freak, I was just like, that by default, that was me, but I'm not operating in my default anymore. I am operating, you know, in the power of something bigger. And yes, the me is still there, you know, and it's like it comes up all the time, but, but that other bigger power is there. And, I, you know, I was just... I, I just was ready to get baptised, really. Um, and as I've prepared for it, I've can, I guess I've come to a deeper understanding of what it means to follow Christ. Um, you know, it means lots of things, but for me, it's not a lot, list of rules. It is, my command is this, love each other as I have loved you. Um, you know, and it's, it's, life is trying to work out what that means. And I'm not saying I know how to do that. I am not saying, you know, that my real life reflects that yet. But that's what I want to be, you know, in my life, in my relationships, in my work. It's, you know, how can I be doing this? And and the other part of following is following his guidance in my life. You know, he is in my life and wants to have, I have a relationship. So I will, you know, get 
sense of what God's will for me is in, in big decisions or in kind of little day-to-day -day things. And it is, when I've got that sense, not then deciding to go off and do my own thing. It is following. Um, you know, it's, it's something bigger than me now. Um, and I can do, you know, it, with his power, I can do that. And I can do so much more when I'm doing things in his power. I can do my job so much better. And just, you know, <laughs> he just does it better than I was trying to do it. Um, and I don't know where that's going to lead. I'm just right at the start of the, the journey, really. And um, I don't know where it's going, but I'm ready for the adventure. Um, you know, and just, if nothing changes, then I, I've got so much now. And... Um, I didn't know I needed God until last summer. Um, and, you know, as, I, as I've kind of shared, like, for most of my life, if someone had tried to tell me that God loved me, I'd have just been like, yeah, whatever, cringe little thing on, yeah, okay. Um, but when I heard it here that day last July, there was just a little bit of willingness to actually hear it. And I just followed that. And um, I'm not here to preach, you know, I, I'll leave that away. But I do know that... God loves every one of you in this church and has a plan for you. And if there's just a little chink of light that you could start a relationship or go with him or go deeper in that relationship, I can just testify that if you open that door, he just comes right in and does wonderful things. And I am so thankful and so excited for what comes next and so happy to be able to share it with all of you today and celebrate it. Um, it's, you know, it's, it's beyond words, really. I've tried to put it into words, but it's beyond words. And I, I just hope that, that you can see what he's done in my life and that, you know, he's doing it in so many of your lives as well. Um, and I'm just so thankful to share that. From Melanie, do you believe in the one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit? I do. Do you confess Jesus Christ as your Lord and Saviour? I do. Do you turn from your sin, renounce evil, and intend to follow Christ? I do. And Melanie, will you seek to live within the fellowship of his church and serve him in the world? With the Lord's help, I will. So Melanie, having heard of your repentance and your confession of faith, I now baptize you, my sister, in the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit.